So it's been an interesting three years. Um, I talked for a lot of times that I wanted an education, um, and that's why I was interested in participating in governance in our country. And what I indeed got was an education. I feel a lot more enlightened. Um, I feel I have a better understanding of how the country operates. And I have a clarity on what is required for us to improve the technology space within Nigeria. So I think that experience actually um, provides a better color on what a program, a digitization of Nigeria program should look like. I would say that's a very interesting question, uh, particularly how you fr uh, phrased it. Um, I would say for one, we have to look at a generational issue. Right. So the former president was not a young man, right? Um, and you would understand that um, technology is something that would have to be, you know, broken down to him. But what I would say is that he understood the importance of the Nigerian youth, right? So if you look at his New Year speech um, in January of 2021, you will see he made very strong statements as to how he felt about youth across multiple sectors. And technology ultimately is just one sector of many, right? So I come from the technology space, and if you speak to me, I will speak about it as it's the only sector, and I will drive initiatives that will make us successful within that sector. But when you sit in the president's seat, you are dealing with a number of sectoral issues, right? Granted, in my opinion, also speaking about that digitalization, um, the technology um, space is actually cross-sectorial. Right? It really should be horizontal and touches every single sector, which it already does. If you look at the conversations we're having today at the CEO conference, you will see the technology keeps picking his head out and say, okay, you can do X, Y, Z, but you'll still need technology because it's the pathway to the future as everything gets digitized. So I would say that it wasn't difficult to convince the previous president. I'm quite sure it's not going to be that difficult to convince the current president on what we believe is important for the future of Nigeria. Um, digital economy is one of the fastest growing economies globally, so it only makes sense that Nigeria takes its rightful position in that growth. So that's also another excellent question um, because it really touches on the heart of the issue, right? So one of the things I would draw your attention to, if you pay attention to, the, this is the CEO conference, which we would say is uh, primarily a private sector initiative, a private sector event. And, on the agenda, there were several conversations around policy and the impact of policy on the private sector. But on those panels, there were no public sector people, right? So what we must understand is that for us to co-create or for us to have forward-thinking policy, there has to be the idea of collaboration, right? We have to have policymakers and the practitioners co-create policies that would help create the market. Right? So market creating policies, market creating regulation, market creating innovations. All of these things need one thing in common, and that thing in common is collaboration. Right? So you must have policymakers at the table, you must have practitioners at the table discussing the different issues that are in that sector. Right? So if I focus now on startups, we look at the issues that affect startups, the different the different subsections of startups, you know, you have the fintechs, you have the health techs, they all have different issues. Some of the issues are the same, some of the issues are more focused on the market they're facing. We need to have the regulators and the practitioners sit in the same room and discuss what those issues are. So that the policies and the regulations that do come out will have the business in mind. Otherwise, it, it, will, be, it will be armchair uh, regulation making uh, because we haven't had the engagement. So you have to have that collaboration and engagement to ensure that the policies that are created are co-created for progressive um, outcomes. So the question you just asked, right, has um, multiple uh, sections to it. So I would like to break it down a little bit. So there's the communication aspect of it, right? Um, communication, of course, can be always done better, right? That speaks to who manages that arm of government. What are the things we're doing and how do we um, d dissect it? And how do we um, uh, uh, produce a plan that we can use to communicate to the citizens as what's going on. But when it comes to um, government policies and business, we have to understand that, you know, sometimes when you have a problem, you don't know exactly where to start in solving it, right? Um, do we start in, hey, government, you know, please keep us in, 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 in the know of what you're doing? Or do we say, uh, private sector, what business are you in? Why don't you continue to try to engage government? Right? Um, you, you have to understand one thing, and this is one thing we've been, we've been saying throughout the, the process of the act that we, that we passed, is that you know, what, what tends to happen is that um, private sector startups 
are try to what they do is they disrupt right the disruption is a positive disruption is meant to innovate and in the process of innovation there will be disruption right what tends to happen in the, the policy maker side is they don't see disruption what the policy maker sees is displacement right the policy maker goes something has changed what is this thing that has changed and why now if you imagine for instance i sit at the cbn and a startup in Yaba or any Sokoto district, wherever the startups work in Sokoto or in Enugu, has created some kind of financial app. I do not know about that app. All I know is something has happened that is now affecting how my monetary policy should actually happen. So you start to do some research, and then you now determine, oh, is this app? You know, what's going to happen naturally is going to, you're going to ban the app. But if we had a better engagement model, right, where the, the, the startups, and the, the, the policymakers are constantly engaging each other. Then there'll be a better understanding of what the disruption impact is going to be. So you no longer see displacement, but more of an anticipated reaction to this value creation process. Right? So that's what this, when you see the CBN talk about sandboxes and a number of different things, is to draw these entities in and give them opportunity to create in a space. So we need to do more of that. Right? So we cannot see there's a general apathy where we say, oh, it's government, and we just, you know, stand to the side. That should change. If we, the, both sides should champion it, right? It should be a, one of those, you know, I don't know how old you are, but the Indian movies, when they go running, they meet in the middle. Yeah. It's one of those things where we must understand that we're trying to build an eco, a healthy ecosystem. And in order to build a healthy ecosystem, we need to engage each other, right? So, for instance, I mean, it's interesting that we've spoken this long and I've not talked about the Nigerian Startup Act. The Nigerian Startup Act actually has a framework within it that ensures that this conversation happens. Right? It has a council built into the act that has government and private sector almost at equal parts for this sole purpose of engaging each other. It has a, a consultancy forum, which is a gathering of private sector in the startup, in the tech-enabled ecosystem, in a, um, formed together, and a secretariat that runs the business of the council, and they are supposed to co-create together. Right? So the act actually sets up this collaboration engagement framework. So I would say I'm no longer in government, so I'm not here holding brief for government. I'm a private sector uh, consultant now. But that framework is meant to create the exact thing you just asked, who should start that. So government has taken the first step. But the interesting enough is that act was co-created. It's the first example of private sector, the practitioners, and public sector, the policymakers, sitting in a room and going, what are the issues? And how can we resolve them? One of the issues that we do have is that of consolidation, right? So we know we are in a federation, right? The state governments and the federal governments are two different things. Well, a good friend of mine and a lawyer friend of mine who's involved with one of our programs will tell you there's no such place as federal government, right? Most of the activities that affect our lives and affect our businesses happens in the states, right? So it's important that when you think of things as startup and policy making, that it, hap it has happened at the federal level, it's currently being implemented by the NIDA. Um, we are now looking to have a state adoption program where every state adopts it. And just recently, Kaduna is in the process of announcing that they've actually passed the Startup Act in Kaduna. Other states are looking to do the same. Now, the positive thing about having a conversation about startups, it also leads to other conversations. So if you say that, look, we have policy, which is startup, you are naturally going to discuss infrastructure as a deficit, infrastructure as an issue. You can have startups, but if you don't have the infrastructure, it's not going to happen. So if you look, for instance, Ocean States, they made an announcement, we want to adopt the Nigerian Startup Act, and they've started their process. But in that same conversation, they say we're going to give right away to the, to the cable companies. They understand that those two things go together. So as you continue to have that conversation within the states, in a sense, you want the states to now start developing policies and infrastructure to support these business developments within their states, then that conversation will be topical. Right? It will go hand in hand. But as you also mentioned about the MDAs, when we talk about digitization of Nigeria, which should be our key project, because I look at it in my head, I think about it, I think of digitization.nigeria. How do we digitize Nigeria from e-governance to e-learning, right, to enable policies that can help commerce develop? You have to think about it, of it from a process of consolidation. Right? How do we consolidate that that activity is now being done out of one program office? Otherwise, you will have multiple you know, innovation or multiple 
um, digitalization activities and they, 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 they're not synced up together. You have to use that word synchronization. So it's obvious what the problem is. The lack of synchronization, lack of uh, consolidation is what we need to solve for. The solutions that are needed, there's no, there's no question about it. Those are not difficult to determine. You need uh, document management, that is understood, right? You need uh, more network, that's understood. You need uh, diversity of medium, that's understood. You need systems, you need servers, you need data centers. We know all that. What we actually need to solve for is consolidation of the activities and pace of the activities. And that is a program management uh, issue where how do we address it and how is that empowered, how is that entity empowered to actually pull technology out from being a vertical siloed activity in multiple places to become a horizontal activity that goes across the entire government. Once we take that formation change, we will have a different outcome. I've heard conversation around merging these two ministries and I would almost argue that these two ministries are doing two different things, right? When you think of science and technology, the term technology is overloaded. Because if you think of technology, a door opener is technology, right? Um, technology, you know, you know, equipment. There are a lot of things that fall under technology because technology is all over our lives. Video games are technology. I mean, I'm, I'm still, you know, because I'm so biased to digital technology and information technology, I'm still even naming things that are, are quite close to it. But te the word technology covers a broad range of things. And it's a very large ministry when you think of science and technology because we're not even thinking about the physical technology. There are a lot of things that fall onto science, right? Um, the, the research, a number of things that need to happen, the innovation, the innovation into schools uh, falls into that ministry. What we're talking about in, 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 in um, ICT and information communication uh, uh, digital economy may almost not need to be a ministry. It may just need to be empowered to do what it needs to do, right? Um, the, the aspect of digital economy that, um, that is being driven is a case of um, building a train track versus the train itself, right? What the, what the ICT aspect of it is supposed to do is build the train tracks, right? What now runs on the train tracks is the commerce. But you know there's a larger problem globally about, about convergence, right? It's a global problem. Who is going to regulate what? Who's going to regulate the infrastructure versus who's going to regulate the OTT, right? Who's, is Netflix a, uh, a TV movie company or is it a technology company, right? So we have to start looking at things along the lines of convergence so that we, we pre-solve that problem, right? So people say we leapfrog. Nigeria has no business leapfrogging, right? Leapfrogging is a dangerous thing to, to do. What we need to do is go through the process. Maybe we need to go through the process faster. But some of the answers are already known. We know that America is having a problem with OTT versus, versus the, the infrastructure guys. There's a lot of legal situations that we've heard. There's a lot of policies that have been passed. Why don't we set our formation, basically our governance formation, to solve for that already, right? So a lot of times, it's not the technology we're trying to solve for. The technology is known. AI is already there, right? Blockchain is already there. OK, if we leapfrog to blockchain and AI, do we have the infrastructure for it, right? If, if I said today, um, business day, go ahead and deploy AI, where, where are you going to put all that AI? I, I, you know, when you think of AI, if you look at the process in developing AI, you have to have something called a data pool. It means you gather all your data into one pool, then you now start to access it and dimension that data in different ways for the outcome that you want. So a company may have multiple AI engines. One may just be for sales, and that AI engine is going to tap into that data pool and use it for that specific outcome because now all the data is together. How do we talk about all the data being together when our data is still in paper? So how can we be talking about AI when we don't have the resources to support AI, right? If we were to do AI very seriously today, we'd be sitting on data centers that are not in Nigeria. Not to say the data centers must be in Nigeria, but we don't have the resources is why it wouldn't be in Nigeria. So there's a step we must take. We may go through those steps faster, but we have no business leapfrogging. We must look at the steps and go through them as quickly as possible as we can. We understand that consolidation is happening, that we must organize ourselves for consolidation. Right? Content is king, but content needs a track to run on. We must build the track. Right? The blockchain policy document, notice I said document, was actually approved on paper. Do you understand what I mean by that? As in, every Wednesday, there's an approval process that happens. 
that approval process happens on paper. It's not digitized. That's where we should start. When you have to print the blockchain document itself, over 60 copies of it, to give to different people to review, so you can now present it as fake, it means that we have not done the right things. Do you understand? These are just some, these are, these are symptoms of things that must happen. When we are more focused on enumeration, as in how many people do we have on NIN, as opposed to what services we can provide Nigerian citizens through NIN, then we are not there yet. So the indicators are very clear, as in things we must do to digitize Nigeria. These are the areas, the very low-hanging fruits, right? There are certain things you want to do. You talk about poverty, who are the poor people. You talk about uh, petrol, you want to give benefits. You have a number that represents you. The NIN is a very powerful tool. It's the number that represents you as a Nigerian, not your passport. Your passport is a nice to have. If you go look at the numbers, a small percentage of people have passports. The number that everybody must have that identifies you as a Nigerian or a foreigner in Nigeria is your NIN number. But what services are you going to put over that platform? Right? So the things that I need to do are all horizontal activities because they cut across a number of ministries. You cannot do it siloed. You have to do it in a horizontal, strategic, consolidated way. Because what you must understand is that the digital economy is vastly growing around the world. Every single country is taking it very seriously. Because what's going to happen down the road is that your poverty line and your digital literacy line will share the same coordinates at some point. So if you are far behind on your digital literacy and you're far behind on your digitization of your country, down the road when you cannot even travel without having some kind of global number or some kind of card, you know, what you will find is that you're not a poor person. Even though you have physical cash, you can't spend it. So what do you uh, uh, um, advise the next minister to do? So I believe the next minister needs to take this action as the key action. You need to look at the consolidating the activities across all of government. Look to empowering that activity, that office, to basically digitize Nigeria. Well, it's, we, you know, Nigeria has all, and this thing sips into everything else we must do, right? Nigeria has all the ingredients to make a fantastic soup, right? We have young people. You hear these numbers thrown around all the time. We have real problems that can be solved with digital. And we have a large market to test those ideas on. So essentially, an idea in Nigeria can impact the world. But we have to create the enabling environment. And the enabling environment goes beyond policies. It goes to also having the infrastructure, right? It goes beyond, it goes into the space of having infrastructure that I can do certain things from Lagos and not have to go to Abuja. That's the basic e-governance, right? That's the basic e-governance, that I can just go on my computer and do 13, 10 different activities across government without physically going to see somebody.